how you go into a grocery store and, and I guess it's just a, a woman. I don't know. It could be a man thing too. But you walk in there and you see some kind of fruit or vegetable or anything on sale like cabbage or something. You're thinking, you know, this is great. I'm going to buy about 20 of them and I'm going to can them. <laughs> That's the way I get sometimes. I walk in somewhere and find something on sale that you just can't hardly, you know, pass up. But I had went into a cast uh, saver the other day, well, a couple of days ago, and they had uh, pineapples for 97 cents a piece. And I thought, and I mean, there was a ton of them. And I thought, well, I'm going to get about 100 of them now. <laughs> no, I just bought uh, six of them. But I wish I'd have bought more. But I was just thinking, I just kept looking at them and, and smelling them. And, you know, they say if you can do this, then they're right. If they'll just come, you know, the little tops just come out that easy, your pineapple's ripe. And I can, I can smell it. It smells good. But you have to be careful, too, because sometimes a good thing's not always that great because... As I was putting these in my basket, I was thinking, now if I get 20 of these and they're not very sweet, you know, so I started putting some back and I thought, okay, Lord, well, just get about six of them and uh, you can make, can up some crushed pineapple or you can put a heavy syrup with them and, you know, and can them or, or make some jam or something. So uh, that's what I've done. I just got six of them. I, Held back and didn't get a cart full but I did cut one up and taste it and they're good I think they're from Costa Rica they are good pineapples they're not huge but they're not the sweetest so I was a little disappointed and as I cut into them there could be some that's sweeter than others so you can't really go by that but uh, I thought well hmm I think I'll make some pineapple salsa that sounded so good because everything I need to make the salsa I put up out of the garden so I've got everything now I've got the jalapenos I got the bell peppers and everything and onions so we're good to go so let's make some pineapple salsa don't that sound good I'm going to take some of the cores from the pineapple and I'm going to make some pineapple vinegar. Now I'm just going to do a pint because I don't have very much uh, vinegar left right now. But I'm not, you know, when you're making apple cider vinegar or pear vinegar or something, you'll use the skins. I don't feel comfortable with that because for the pineapples, one thing, I don't feel like you can get them clean enough. I just don't know what the pineapples have been sprayed with or anything else. So I'm not using the skins. But I am using the cores. And of course vinegar will preserve fruit. So I'm just wanting to make a little bit of vin pineapple vinegar for cooking with or uh, making salad dressings and stuff with. So I'm just going to put my vinegar over my cores and I'm going to let it ferment and make me some pineapple vinegar. I mean it's the same concept as when I make the apple cider vinegar or when I make my homemade cleaners and stuff because I'll put the whole lemon in the vinegar and it's, it's really good cleaner but I'm wanting this for to eat, to use in cooking. So I'll let it ferment for a couple of weeks. And then I'll taste it and see what it see what it tastes like. 
we got our ingredients here together and I'm just gonna go down through here and tell you the ingredients now it all depends on if you want a chunky salsa I really don't care for a real chunky salsa especially if I'm gonna be maybe making a marinade like a jerk marinade for chicken or pork or something with the salsa I, I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, process it up just a little bit uh, like you know some people like a real chunky salsa and that's fine if that's the way you want it but uh, I've got six cups of pineapples and I want to show y'all that the six pineapples that I cut up it's gonna make enough for me to do six half, half pints of my pineapple salsa and it's gonna I'm gonna be able to uh, just go ahead and can up some pineapple and just a simple syrup because I do make a lot of um, desserts with pineapples. And I'll probably put them in the processor and make crushed pineapple and can them. There's different cakes and stuff that I use pineapple in, so that'll be a good thing. So it made about uh, 13 cuts. So that's, that's going to be a canner full, so that's good. My recipe calls for two medium onions, red onions. Now, I don't have any red onions, but I do have some Alabama sweet onions, and that's what I'm going to be putting in there. They're pretty sweet. They're, they're a good onion. I get them at Walmart. And it also calls for four diced jalapenos. Now, this is all going to be up to how hot you want this. Mr. Brown said that our jalapenos <laughs> were really hot this year. So I'm going to be really careful how many. I'm not going to put four. But if you like things really spicy. Now this is the deal. You can change your peppers out. You could put like, if you like stuff really hot, you could put a habaneros in here. But you have to be careful with that because you can throw off the pH, which is what keeps your pH, you know, your acidity, which is what helps keep your your shelf life on your your cannon so you have to be careful with that so I'm thinking that I might just put two jalapenos in there what do you think mr. Brown one or two <laughs> you said they were hot <laughs> two okay I'm gonna be careful because I don't want it too hot so we're gonna say I'm gonna put two but the recipe calls for four diced jalapenos and it calls for a bell pepper and I think a red bell pepper would be really pretty in there because there's no tomatoes in this salsa so that's a good thing for people that don't like tomatoes or can't eat tomatoes but what I've got here is I took out some I had some Italian bell peppers and I also had some anchos ancho peppers from the garden and I needed to use them so I took them out of the freezer and I'm going to cut them up. And what I've got here probably adds up to probably a large bell pepper. And I'll just dice them up and put them in there. You need two teaspoons of minced garlic. And I've done it two heaping teaspoons. Because that's the way we roll around here. We like our garlic. A half a cup vinegar and I'm using my homemade apple cider vinegar you just use what you've got I'm gonna put some cumin and I'm just gonna put it in there to taste I'm gonna even add a little bit of sugar just a little bit um, you can add two tablespoons of honey or two tablespoons of sugar whichever whichever one you want to do I think I'm gonna do sugar though so I've got my garlic, my jalapenos, my vinegar, my cumin, sugar, pineapple, and uh, bell peppers. I'm going to process my pineapples. I'm going to get them to about the consistency that I'm wanting. Now make sure when you're taking the outside of your pineapples off, sometimes you'll have these little brown spots. I mean, they ain't going to hurt you or nothing, but just try to get as much of that off as you can. So I'm going to process this up and uh, put everything in there together and 
We'll see what it looks like. Let's get everything put in the pot. I've got, I pulsed my pineapple, my onions, and my bell peppers up. And this is the consistency that I really want for my salsa. Like I said, you can do it in chunks or just a little bit chunkier than this. So we're going to put the rest of the ingredients in. I'm going to put a little bit of our canned jalapenos. And it's all up to you how, how hot you want your salsa. So that's about two. I've got half a cup of vinegar. I'm going to put about a teaspoon of cumin. I'm going to put my two teaspoons, heaping teaspoons of garlic. And I've got about two tablespoons of sugar. Now, you can put honey, two tablespoons of honey, if that's what you prefer. So I'm gonna bring this up to a simmer. And when it starts with a little bit of a rolling boil, around the sides. I'm going to let it cook for about 15 more minutes. Okay, everything's uh, coming along pretty good. This is my pineapple salsa and it's been simmering on the stove for about 15-20 minutes and I like the consistency of it. It's really good. And me and Mr. Brown both taste of it and this is really good salsa. And there's so many different things you'll be able to do with this pineapple salsa. So I've got that ready. I'm going to keep it hot. And of course, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. Over here, I've got the rest of the pineapples. And it was about close to seven cups that was left over. Because I used six in my salsa. Six cups. And uh, I just put them in a simple syrup. It was in about nine cups of water to half a cup of sugar. And I've got that simmering, and uh, as soon as that gets good and hot, I've got my jars in here getting hot. I've already, of course, I washed my jars and my lids and my rings in hot soapy water. And uh, so now they're sterilizing here and getting hot. So I'm going to get everything else together, and uh, we'll start canning this stuff up. Hey. Does anybody else's drainer look like this when you're canning? Or is it just me? Okay, let's get this stuff canned up. I've got my jars are hot and I'm using half pint jars. Jars are hot. My sauce is still hot. And we'll start jarring it up. Now you're supposed to be able to get 
six half pints out of this recipe. So we're going to see what we get. This smells so good. I need to leave about a half an inch head space. This is going to this is going to be good with chips. I tell you, you make your homemade tortilla chips and you do it with a little bit of cinnamon and, and sugar and eat this salsa cold with that kind of chips. You talk about good. And there's a recipe for a Cuban pork shoulder and it has a, a name for it and I just can't remember. Well, they use a marinade and use pineapple salsa. So I'm thinking that it would be good on any kind of pork, really. Pork chop, pork loin. And you could even take you out a little bit and just warm it up with a little bit of cream cheese and crackers. Kind of like you would pepper jelly. That'd be good. Well, I'm pretty much going to get, or you can get three pints, whichever. Six half pints, three pints. And I'm going to get every little, unless Mr. Brown wants to eat some of it. There's just a little bit left in the pan. Okay. So we got them in the hot jars. And got me a little bit of water here with a little bit of vinegar in it, and I'm going to, well, first up, I'm going to try to debubble it a little bit. Probably not a lot of bubbles in it, but just kind of stir it around. Get some of the bubbles out. Now, if you left it kind of chunky, you might have to do it in pint jars. I'm not sure. Okay. Now, let's wipe our rims really good because you don't want nothing on the top of your rim to where your lids won't seal. So just wipe them off real good. And our next step will be putting our lids and our bands on, and then we're going to go ahead and can up our pineapple. Okay, I got my lids on. Now I'm going to put my bands on. You just want to put it on finger tight. I'm going to get my other jars out of the hot water. I'm going to put these in there, and we're going to can up our just regular pineapple, and then we'll get them, get every one of them in the hot water bath. Okay, we're going to finish up canning the pineapples. And what I've done is I just made a simple syrup. Uh, I mentioned this a while ago, and I may have made too much syrup, but trial and error. But it was nine cups of water and a half a cup of sugar. And you can put less sugar if you want to. Now you can also, if you've got cans of pineapple juice that's left over from something to use it, you could use it instead of the sugar water. That'd be good. But I've got a lot of uses for this pineapple, so we're going to start putting it in jars. I let the, the syrup and the pineapples simmer for about 10 or 15 minutes. So it's all good and hot. You just want to make sure that your pineapples are covered in the syrup. They're about a half an inch head space. I'm not sure how many pints I'm going to get yet, so. I've got my other jars back over here in the hot water bath. It's got my sauce in it. Staying hot. 
jars need to be hot. And I washed my funnel off because I didn't want any of that hot jalapeno sauce in with regular. That'd be bad if he's making a cake and needing to add a little spicy spicy with it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Brown's over here with chips eating the rest of this sauce out of the pan. He said it's really good. So if he says it's good, that's good enough. Okay. To me, it just has the right jalapeno taste. Just it's enough. not too hot. Not hot, hot, and just a good flavor. Some people like really spicy, but like I told them, you have to be careful putting too much, like a habanero something with that intense heat because it'll it'll lower your pH and your acidity, and that's what's keeping your, you know, your pineapple or whatever, you know, shelf stable for a while. I really think it's going to be excellent on some pork. Pork? Well, that's what I was talking about because there's a lot of Cuban recipes that just really sound good to me. And I've ate uh, some Cuban pork before. It's, it's just got really good taste. Got too much in that one. So I got four pints. I'm going to make sure they're covered good with simple syrup. And let me see, I might be able to get a jelly jar full, let's see. If not, I'll kill it off and put it in the fridge and we can just eat. We can eat it after a while, Mr. Brown. That'd be okay? That'd be fine with me. So since I've been off, for Christmas break, we got to go back on the seventh. I've been trying to get caught up on some canning because, you know, in summertime you're doing your canning stuff that's coming out of your garden and stuff like that. So all the other stuff you do when it's cold weather, and you can't do anything else outside, like your your deer, your just different stuff like that that you need to get canned up. I like canning stew and I want to can up some chili. I'm thinking about taking some, Nanny's going to be grinding up some deer meat and I'm thinking about taking some of it and making a manwich, uh, like you would buy a manwich, sloppy joe in a can. I'm thinking about doing that and canning that to have on the shelf. You think that would be good? Come in and eat deer sloppy joes? Okay, it done four pints and a little jelly jar and that was seven cuts so that wasn't too bad. Did you tell them the price you got? Yeah, I told them it's 97 cents a piece. So I'm going to debubble these pineapples. I've got a bunch of jars outside in a box that I've got to get cleaned up. And some of them are really old jars that I bought from that elderly woman. Uh, I mean, I give, what, a, a dollar? How much should I give for that, them whole big boxes. Probably less than five dollars for all of them. I and I mean, I got, I've got a ton of jars out there that I've got to get cleaned up. Because y'all know as well as I do that jars are expensive. That's why I don't. <laughs> it's so funny because if I give somebody something that, you know, a can or something, I'll say, now if you'll just hold on to that jar, and usually they'll always give it back to me. Always. Okay, clean your rims good. Same thing. Hot lids. I've debubbled it. You always need to make sure you debubble. Now I don't put my lids in scalding hot water because anymore they seem to think that it will it'll hurt the the sealing, the rubber part right here, it kind of hurts it to put it in too hot of boiling water. So we don't do that no more. Put the lid, my rings on, finger tight. And we're going to get these in the canner. 
I've got my jars in my water bath, and there's at least two inches covering the top of these jars. Really and truly, you don't need anything any less than two inches. I think, I think some people say one inch, but uh, I don't go any less than two. Some people can go four, so. And what I'm going to have to do is I've got two jars left that didn't fit, so I'm going to have to go over here and make me another little water bath, but that's okay. So you bring this up to a rolling bowl, then you're going to time it for 15 minutes. 